Let's check the latest polls in tight races around the country. For that, we go to the hardball scoreboard. We'll start with Pennsylvania, where a new Maris McClatchy poll has Republican Pat Toomey up nine over Democrat Joe Sestak. It's a similar story into Colorado, where Republican Ken Buck has an eight-point lead over Senator Michael Bennett. And in Wisconsin, it's Republican Ron Johnson up seven over Senator Russ Feingold. Finally, to Illinois, and a glimmer of hope and good news for the Democrats, as a new Chicago Tribune poll has Democrat Alexei Giannoulis, or Giannoulis with a slight lead over Republican Mark Kirk. Lots of voters still undecided in that race, as you can see. We'll continue to check the hardball scoreboard on all the big races each night leading up to November 2nd. Let's right now go to the state of play right now with just four weeks of campaigning yet to go. Terry McCoff was chairman of the Democratic National Committee, and Richard Wolf is an MSNBC political analyst. Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, let's look at this poll we have right now. This is what we call a generic. Who's going to control Congress? NBC's latest poll on the congressional ballot has Republicans. Republicans at 46 to 43. Now, that's not good for the Democrats, but it's in within the margin of error. But look at this. These are likely voters. Now, look at this. 49 to 40 it was in August. So you definitely see a projection there, Terry McAuliffe. Yeah, I think the voters are now focusing. I think a lot of voters have let their frustration out. And now as we get close to the election, they've seen some of these Tea Party candidates. They don't like what they're hearing. President Obama is now out campaigning. The folks are getting energized. And they realize they got to come out and vote. They've let their frustrations be known, but we're getting close to election time. We have a huge cash advantage, three to one advantage on some of our top house races. The DNC just came out, 16 million bucks in the month of September. So we have a lot more money. The president's out campaigning. Get okay, that. give me a commercial to the Democratic vote right there. I always kid on this show about Democrats are the last yeah. people to show up for the movies. They come in with all the popcorn and coke and all, but they're about five minutes late. Yeah. How do you get the Democrats to get their act together this time? Well, first of all, the Democrats saved this economy from going off a cliff. President Obama's done exactly what he said he'd do. We got a lot of work to finish it up. This is about a choice. They want to repeal health care. They want to undo the financial services regulation that was put in. Democrats want to fight for manufacturing, health care jobs. They want to fight for green technology jobs. Republicans are against all that. You have a choice. We're just beginning. We saved the economy. We got a lot more work to do. Don't stop Richard us. Richard Wolf, in that's months. a good argument. How come we don't hear it so loudly? This is why he's, he's the model for a DNC chair. If anyone's thinking of taking that job right I don't hear this kind Richard, of pressure. There, brother. <laughs> I hear a lot of explanation at town meetings. I see the president out there trying to explain to that woman about why she's back to eating franks and beans. Right. But I don't hear a strong, uh, you know, aggressive argument. We're better than those guys. Those guys are bums. Well, why don't to, we hear that kind of they're talk? They're trying to do that, but they're trying to right now play the game. We're all getting played here, okay? It's in everyone's interest to say this race is tightening, and it may be tightening. It may open up Why is up that again. in everyone's interest? Yeah, because... No, stop right there. No, because. I'm telling you why. Because, number one, Democrats are demoralized. They need to feel this game is still worth playing, so they've got to get out and vote. Two, but shouldn't Republicans, Republicans want to put people to sleep? Republic, no, Republicans want to, don't want to be too complacent, so they want to say the race is tightening, and we, of course, love the fight, so everything is tightening. But look, it, this could open up again, and six points, three points, this comes down to a couple of dozen House races. That's where we're going to judge if this is a success or failure for either side. Uh, uh, okay, it, i got a good argument. Some Democrats out there hope the tight races for governor, which always excites people, will help get the races in the House a lot closer in those tough districts. Now, look at that. We have t uh, California races really breaking out, I think, Jerry Brown's going to get the big break out there. He picked up a fortune cookie the other day with this woman's yeah. illegal hiring. Texas, I'm always amazed that Perry's in trouble, but I don't know, understand that guy. Anyway, he talks like a Saudi buster and dresses like he's from uh, Savile Road. No, I can't figure him out. Mayor. And then Illinois looks like a, well, that doesn't look too good for the Dems. Ohio's looking better for the Dems. Florida yeah. looks very, very dicey for both sides. But how's that going to get people to come out and vote in the House and vote positively for Democrats? Because I hear Democrats have tougher races. they got to win in races that voted for, for Bush and voted for McCain. Well, we all know how important the governor's races are, especially in the elections where, it, uh, where we are today with the zero at the end because it affects the redistricting, which is so important. Democrats understand that we've got to have governors because these are going to be the lines drawn. You look at Florida, Alex Sink, I think our first woman uh, yeah. governor in the state of Florida, Bill White. Well, she's a, a lot heavier than the other guy, right? There's more to her than the Republican candidate. She's a great candidate. Yes, I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and in Texas, Bill White, I didn't know what you meant, a lot heavier. I didn't know what no, you meant. No, I meant positive. Good. Uh, Bill White was a great mayor down in Texas. California, I agree with you, is opening up for us. But with the Democrats, they got to understand, these governors are going to draw these lines. You cannot sit home. you got to get out. I think, listen, people are frustrated about the economy. Everybody gets it. Their jobs, they're worried about their future. But now that they realize this is serious, they've seen okay. these Tea Party candidates who believe that unemployment compensation is unconstitutional. That 
would, Joe, that would be Joe Social Miller. Security. That's Joe Miller. That's right. Privatized Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. That scares people. So you can sit back and just, you know, say, I'm not going to vote. Or you can get energized and say, we got to continue. Well, give me an example of that. I'm hearing that Christine O'Donnell, for example, who has said, well, she apparently, we're going to show the tape in a few minutes, that she says I was a witch. I mean, it's unbelievable. She's right out there this time around, that Bill Maher quotes. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to kill her candidacy. But apparently everybody in Pennsylvania, which shares the same media market, you know, in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. with Delaware, now is knowing about, knowing about her. Right. Bad form of speech there, but they know about her now. And that's helping the Dems get uh, activated. Around there, but what's happening up in Pittsburgh? I mean, that's where this is going to get decided, right? And, P and Pennsylvania is going to be the real warning sign for Democrats. Where, how, how is the Rust Belt votes going to shape this time around on the economy? I agree with How's that. it through Ohio? I think, there's, I think there could be some interesting results out in Colorado in some of the, the new purple states, but those old Democratic states, the Rust Belt states, I think Democrats are facing a really uphill you know, I, I, Let's, talk to, that guy. let's talk to the guy from Buffalo, the Tim Russert guy, the guy yeah. who <laughs> wears a big jobber to a football game. He makes middle, middle income. He works right. in a factory job, maybe. He's always been a Democrat for historic family reasons, but he's voted for Reagan. Yeah. He's, he's a Reagan Democrat. I look at the Sestak race is very tough. I look at the, uh, yeah. at the race uh, in Illinois, and, and Illinois looks a little better, but I'm looking at the race in Ohio, for example. That's a yeah. tough one for you guys. Corbin looks strong. Yeah. And right across to Mark Feingold in trouble. Who would have believed he'd be in trouble? Yeah, but, but look at Strickland. I mean, people had written him off, Ted Strickland. So let's stick to the Senate races. Passed. Let's get to them. What about the Senate races? Why does the Rust Belt look so rough for the Senate? Right across from, right across from well, Pennsylvania, it, it Wisconsin. It goes back to the economy. It's jobs. And if you look at the Rust Belt, that's where they've lost most of the jobs. They've all yeah. been shipped overseas. And I'll make this argument. The whole thing about shipping our jobs overseas, that has really hurt the Republicans. And I think that's one of the reasons you've seen the Democratic Party. That's why Democrats forward. like, uh, like uh, who's the guy in, uh, who's the guy in uh, Kentucky? Jack Conway? Conway. Conway keeps talking about that overseas tax break. Yeah, it's bothering. Smart move. Why are we Here's the Senate situation. Overseas? We ought to keep them here. Here's the Senate situation right now. Republicans need to pick up 10 seats to take over to get the 51 because the vice president would break a tie at 50 for the Democrats. Charlie Cook, the expert we have on all the time, has eight Republican seats. His toss-ups are leaning Republican. If Republicans hold all of those and pick up three Democratic seats that lean their way, North Dakota, Arkansas, and Indiana look good for them, then they'll need to win seven of the nine Democratic races that are still toss-ups right now. And so you look at that race. They've got to win everything we're looking at right now, basically. They've got to start sweeping it. They got to knock off Blumenthal. Why don't we keep the map up there so we can talk this thing? Blumenthal up there in Connecticut. Then Pennsylvania, they got to knock off Sestak. They got to grab Manchin and beat him, the governor, who's still popular. They got to win that race. They got to beat Janolis. They got to beat uh, Mark Feingel. They got to knock out Michael Bennett. They got to take out the leader, Harry Reid. Then they got to take out Barbara Box. Then they go up and take out Patty Murray and only lose two in that streak. Right. Tough. Al almost impossible. Very tough. Very to tough for the Republicans. Look at Joe Manchin. 70% 70 approval rating. If he were running for governor again right now, he would win in a walk. It's the Senate. And well, I you know why. Because people are comfortable sure. over the years, like in Utah, voting yeah. for Democrats for, for this governorship, which is an administrative job, That's but true. they don't trust the philosophy of the Democrats, right, also Richard? West Virginia's relationship to President Obama, let's face and it. And what is it race? I, I, it's culture. It's, it's not oh, connecting. Oh, cute. Is it race? I, I think there's a racial element to it, yeah. And is I think it that cold? Was, is it I think guns? That, there's a lot of other issues. I, look, I don't think he's connected with those voters. I don't think he has, uh, he, he's ever done that. He didn't do that in the primaries either. And, and uh, Governor Manchin ought to be in a much, much stronger... Mm. You cannot say that this is about his personality. And, and, and is anyone thinking he's going to have a different politics if he's in the Senate? There is something, again, Nobody about the economy. Nobody gets to vote on national issues. Sure. Yeah. Sure, but I, I think there's a, there's a, there's okay. a cultural shift there when it comes to national politics. And a lot of that comes down to... This Blumenthal race, I've never understood. Here's a guy with, a, obviously, a, br a big brain. Incredible education, looks great, looks like a politician, as best you can look in a political race, and yet won't straighten out his war record. I don't understand why he didn't weeks ago, months ago, say, you know, I got caught up with this because some people thought I'd actually fought over there. I began to say I did. I should have never done it. It's a, it's a character weakness. I should have fixed it. I'm now fixing it. I did not serve in Vietnam. I should have never said I did. Why does he just do it and get it over with? You should You're an expert. I, I, I always do it. Get it right out of bed. Get it Why is this Kelsey saying, saying you made a I will not have my, my reserve <laughs> service discredited yeah. tonight? That's kind of yeah. BS talk. doesn't work with people. We all make mistakes. Get out and admit it. Move on. And deal with a mistake is critical. I think he'll be okay. Meg Whitman, on the other hand, has not dealt with her mistake well at all. Well, you're being partisan struggle. here because they have the same exact problem. <laughs> They're not admitting they made a mistake. She knew that person was illegal. Yeah. They, look, you, you, I don't know. I don't she's know. a top executive. She's a CEO with eBay. She's a genius businessman who's made hundreds of billions of dollars, millions of dollars. She knows when the person working for is here legally or not. Nine no, years? You, come on. You, make, you have a conversation how, now and then about your own. How do you deal with a crisis? Everyone knows politicians. They're human, okay? She's how blaming it on her husband. Right. Is that smart politics for a CEO?
No, I don't think it, I, you've got to take you've got to take your knocks and you say you say you made a mistake. And this is how you clean it up, not by blaming other people or blaming the other campaign for leaking. You think Jerry Bowman is just plain lucky? You, you and I you would never get lucky? blamed. Kathleen and Dorothy, no. we would never get by blaming no, ourselves. No, I, I mean, although she does that. keep the checkbook, I have to tell you. <laughs> Let me ask you this: yeah. Do you think uh, Do you think that Jerry Brown's just basically lucky? How has to explain this break of the cards? And, and boxers always been lucky out in California. No, but the, listen, in California is a Democratic state. If you can energize the voters, you can get them out to vote. Listen, the Democrats are going to win. It's a great Democratic state. Jerry Brown has fought on the principles of the party. So uh, has Barbara Boxer. For us, now we get close. I'm excited. But, I got to you know, talk about your friends. Are are Bill Clinton. We spent a week with him. I got to yeah. tell you, talk in about Ireland, about, no less. He combines serious business with fun. He knows how to do. Yeah. Jack Kennedy used to do that. <laughs> yeah. Fun and serious business. Nobody puts it together. In fact, politics includes both of you know. Right. He's going to campaign a lot the next couple of weeks, isn't he? He is booked the entire time. I think he's leaving one day open day before the election to figure where he's going to go the last day. But, you know, you've seen Gallup. Everybody remembers. Was he's doing California. He's doing Pennsylvania. Seen. He's everywhere. He's going to do Colorado. Yeah. He's doing all Virginia. I feel bad. No, I don't think we're in He seems Virginia. to be doing two kinds of candidates. The ones that were loyal to him in previous races, including those for, for Mrs. Clinton, for Senator Clinton, yeah. now Secretary Clinton, and people he's told to go help by the administration. Right. Let's be clear. There's not enough time. He gets 100 requests a day. You right. can't be everywhere. First of all, he wants to help the people who helped Hillary. I mean, it right. was his spouse ran for president of the United States. You, you stick with You mean he's a relationship you. politician? Not yeah. He's a yeah, politician. Yeah, listen, we yeah, like that. I like stuff. relationship yeah. politicians. And he goes where the White House says we desperately need you and where we can keep the House and Senate. He will go. Right, but are you going to run for governor again? I, uh, I want to create a lot of jobs first. We'll see where we are. Okay, you mean private sector jobs? You bet. What a Absolutely. Republican you are. I'm anyway, thank you, Terry McCall. <laughs> Another, what do you mean? I'm this teasing. We're all about creating jobs in the Democratic Party. Sense of humor comes yeah. from the job.